We begin with athletics tonight, where sprinter Joella Lloyd won the double in her first competitive engagement in, a, in o, over a year at the Grenada Whitsuntide Invitational over the weekend. Lloyd, uh, who was sidelined since February of 2018, picked up gold in the 100 and 200 meters at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. The Antiguan set a new games record in the under-20 women's 200 preliminaries, clocking 24.33 seconds. She also ran a personal best to clinch the 100 in 11.62 seconds. Junior Sports Woman of the Year, Sonia Jones, the cup silver in 11.94. Team Antiguan Barbuda also picked up gold in the 200 of the men's under-20 and in the triple jump, uh, Jalen Diet took top honors in the 200 in 21.61, while Taiko Ogaro dominated the triple jump, leading 15.21 meters. Diet also collected bronze in the 100, just behind compatriot Parak Matthew, who ran 10.89 seconds. Both athletes were separated by one thousandth of a second. Another Antiguan, Tahir Walsh, picked up silver medals in the men's international 100 and 200 in 10.46 and 21.17, respectively. Well, stay with Athletics. Hurricane Power surged to victory in the CPTSA 28th annual Whit Monday Road Relay. Jack Matthew picks up that story. Both the male and female Hurricane Power teams excelled in Monday's contest. The male runners won in 34 minutes and 35 seconds while the females covered the 4 by 1.5 mile relay in just over 41 minutes. The male quartet comprised Calique Saint-Jean, Javante Merchant, Devon James, and Shaquan Hughes. The triumphant girls were Tanika James, Stephanie Hughes, Ashanti Joyce, and Hannah Charles. Saint-Jean also completed the 10K to win in 34.40. Yolanda Joseph was the female victor in 59 minutes and 59 seconds. In the walk of 5.5 miles, Harris Henry and Jackie Ladoux stood tall. Twelve teams competed in the relay, 20 runners took part in the 10K, and there were 12 walkers. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. In football, the Generation Next Under-13 football team returned to the shores on Monday after a successful trip to St. Bart's. Greeting the footballers was Sharif Sargent. GN brought home the second place trophy in the St. Bart's Foot Challenge. They were defeated by Guadeloupe in the championship game 2 0. Captain Javon Parker, who was the leading scorer in the tournament, said his parents' sacrifices motivated him. Well, my mindset going into the game was I, my mom and dad spent a lot of money. I didn't want to waste that money for nothing. Head coach Chesley Brown commended the young footballers for a fighting performance. The fight that I saw from these guys, especially some of the young guys, we have guys who are just like age 10 and so on coming up against national teams. I must say we were playing against national teams and we're just a little club from Antigua. And what we accomplish, um, I'm very proud of the guys. Manager Dominique Noon noted the team exceeded his expectations. Exceeded by far. By far. Um, the guys did very, very well. I don't actually think that seeing them play that well together. Um, it was absolutely amazing for them. They did very, very well. Sharif Sargent, ABS Sports. Now we're at the World Cup in France. Hot favorites and defending champions, the United States, have made a spectacular start to the Women's World Cup in France. The Americans hammered Thailand 13 goals to nil this afternoon. Moments uh, to celebrate as well for Sweden and the Netherlands. So Sweden blanked to Chile 2 0, while the Netherlands overcame New Zealand by a 1 0 margin. Well, Sri Lanka rose to the fifth uh, in the table after their World Cup game against Bangladesh at Bristol was abandoned due to rain without a ball uh, being bowled today. It was Sri Lanka's second wash washout of the tournament following a similar outcome to their match against Pakistan on Friday. But the points again was enough to lift them to fifth uh, level with England, India and Australia. The next fixture is against Australia at the Oval on Saturday. Bangladesh, who take on the West Indies uh, at uh, Taunton next Monday, also climbed one place to seventh. Still with cricket, Mohamed Shazad has threatened to quit cricket after being declared unfit for the remainder of the World Cup by the Afghanistan Cricket Board. Joel Rain explains. Shazad, an opening batsman and wicketkeeper, played in Afghanistan's first two matches. 
but the ACB cut him from the squad last Thursday, saying his knee injury would not allow him to play any further part in the tournament. Sky Sports reporting that Shazad said that according to medical advice, he would have been fit to play in a few days after having his knee drained. The 31-year-old had a total of just seven runs in two losses to Australia and Sri Lanka. He is Afghanistan's highest run score in one internationals with an aggregate of 2,727 runs. Jewelry in ABS Sports. Stand with cricket in a high scoring final, Antiguan Barbuda romped to title honours in the Leeward Islands 2020 Masters here at Mock Pond in All Saints. Uh, with the details, here's Jack Matthew. Chasing a revised target of 167 of 17.3 overs, after the initial one of 184 was reduced due to rain, the Antiguans prevailed under the Duckworth Lewis method. Ex Windies batsman Sylvester Bouncing Joseph led the assault with 56, and Ralston Trist Phillip contributed 38. Former Leewards player Earl Waldron, an Antiguan representing St. Thomas, picked up two victims. Another cricketer who has worn the colors of the Twin Island State, Neil Lewis, who is now a resident of the U.S., was exhilarating as well. Lewis pummeled an undefeated 92 in the St. Thomas innings of 183 for three. Waldron gave support with 41. Lewis was later voted MVP of the final and the tournament. The all-rounder produced the highest individual score of 92, the most runs, was the leading wicket-taker, and had the best bowling figures. Runners-up St. Thomas collected $420, US dollars, while champions Antigua and Barbuda collected the trophy, plus an undisclosed sum. Jack Matthew, ABS Sports. Now, the trophy symbolizing supremacy in the St. John's Cooperative Credit Union Women's Softball League has been captured by enforcers. Sajiko Life Enforcers lifted the silverware after sending female Flyers crashing to a seven-wicket defeat in the final at Powell's. Flyers, sponsored by Wadadli Event Services, posted 92 for four of their 25 overs. Therese Parker struck 44 not out, while Gaina Logaro was the most economical, with one for 13 in her five-over allotment. Enforcers then eased to 93 for three in 19, with uh, John Samuel uh, cracking an unbeaten 43. Bryson's insurance bullets earlier clinched uh, the Caribbean Alliance men's title at the same venue. Newfield Eagles rose to the challenge by booking a spot in the Sir Richie Richardson Parish League final over the weekend. The Eagles ended the quest of Mahiko by soaring to a six-wicket victory, requiring 158. They eased to 163 for four of 27 overs, with Shane Campbell striking 35 and Huan Tong hitting 34. Spinner Dwayne Fordyce claimed two for 29 in seven overs. Mahiko had been dismissed for 157 with Darren Donner scoring 31. Campbell was the bowling star with figures of four for 26 in his quarter of seven overs. And Osafa Bourne took two for 25 in 6.3. In the remaining semi-finals, St. Paul's will clash with police this coming weekend. Now in volleyball, frontrunners Paragons were pushed to the vol in the National Volleyball League over the weekend. Sharif Sargent reports. In an epic female encounter, Paragons overcame Neil Cocker in the squad 3-2 at the YMCA indoor facility. After taking the first two sets 25-10, 25-20, they dropped the next two 26-28, 24-26. The undefeated Paragons then fought back by spiking their way to victory in the fifth and deciding set 15-10. Sharif Sargent, ABS Sports. Now in basketball, defending champions, Flyers will be without two of their star players when they take on Stingers in game one of the best of three semifinals tonight. Reigning co-MVPs Kenya Akam and Tori Fassett will miss the opener after they were suspended for one game by the Basketball Association. The duo were suspended as a result of their role in the fracker in the deciding quarterfinal game against Braves on Sunday. Akam is the floor general for three-time champions, while Fassett has led the team in scoring for the past two seasons, Flyers and Stingers split the regular season one game apiece. The game will tip off at 8.15 following the first semi-final clash between Overs, OJs and Potters Steelers. Now, in the NBA, defending champions Golden State Warriors survived to force Game 6 in the 2019 Finals. Splash Brothers Steph Curry and Klay Thompson combined for 57 points as the Warriors stole 
Game five by one point, 106 to 105. Curry poured in a game high 31, pulled eight boards and dished out seven assists, while Thompson sank 26. Kawhi Leonard led the Raptors with 26 and 12. Leonard had assistance from Kyle Lowry and Marc Gasol, uh, who added 18 and 17 points, respectively. Well, that's the sport. Yeah, that was quite the game, too. Huh? 106, 105, so close. That's what makes it fun, Mr. B, your, but your, <laughs> your Warriors survived, huh? Yes, and my prediction uh, has failed on that one. Uh, I did say 4-1 in favor of the Warriors. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was almost 4-1 in favor of Toronto. Who knows? Yeah. But anyway... Um, Let's see what game six turns on. Exactly. I, I, I've stopped predicting on that one. Let's see. It's two unpredictable. Well, it's swinging just, from one to Yeah, it's, it's so close. So mm -hmm. close. Mm -hmm. So I'm not predicting yeah. any further on that one. Exactly. I leave, to, I leave that a time. Raptors ended it in game seven. That's what I say. All right. Okay. Here's something else. Sounds well, good. it was euphoria for a New York uh, high school, New York high school fans after their pitcher pitched a no-hitter in the championship decider and they couldn't resist. They had to pile on the celebration Ow. and uh, with the baseball team. They joined in. <laughs> and listen, don't mind the pitcher at the bottom of the pile. He's okay. He was good enough to do an interview afterwards. And he was still elated that he is a champion. <laughs> I want to see the interview. I want to see the interview. Because that, that's <laughs> too many people. That's too no, many people on one kid. Listen, it, I mean, <laughs> when he got up, all the fans, you know, the yeah, high school yeah. fans, they were hugging him and all of that. Oh, listen, man. Listen, I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> Like Just, I Listen, <laughs> if you don't, or if, it, if if you can't take the celebration, don't do anything good. Okay. Right? Sounds like if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> right. And by the so. way, uh, it seems like in the ICC Cricket World Cup, it's the rain which is threatening to win the World oh. Cup. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Coming up. No, no, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that is true. We, we haven't seen cricket in the past two, three days. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Since we saw. Uh, no, uh, uh, Sri Lanka yeah. seems to be the, uh, with the worst luck because two of their matches completely washed out. Oh wow. Interesting. All right, coming up in regional international developments. Uh, regionally, there is no extension in the registration of Venezuelan migrants in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you more about that story. Plus, 10 candidates are running to become the next prime minister of Britain. Those stories are ahead. Stay with us. <laughs> 